Okay. The next cranial nerve is the second cranial nerve, or optic nerve, and this concerns the function of the eyes. And to do that, we start by just looking at the eyes themselves. And then we're going to test visual acuity at six meters using a Snellen chart. So could we go over this way, Thank you? Right, Hugh, what I'd like you to do is cover up your right eye and read the letters starting at the top. H-A-L-T-N-C-O-L-H-A-E-C-T-N-O-C-L-O-H-N-A-A-E-N-L-O-H-C-T. Fine, that's about as far as that's good. Go. I want you to just cover up your other eye now and start at the top again. H A L T N O T N C O L H A E C T N O C L O H N A A E N L O H C T. And that's about as far as I can go. Fine, good. And that's uh, six over six, both eyes. If uh, one of the difficulties is that Hugh had forgotten his. Uh, distance glasses and we can correct that by using a pinhole. If he couldn't read the top line then I'd ask him to come to within one meter of the chart and try and read it then and the top line then would be 1 over 60. If that wasn't possible we would use hand movements or perception of light. The next thing we're going to test are the visual fields, which we do with a moving finger one eye at a time. So Hugh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to ask you to cover up that eye, and I'm asking you to look at my nose, and when I move a finger, I want you to point to it. Good. Excellent. Could you cover up the other eye? We'll do the same sort of thing. Again, look at my nose, and when I move a finger, point to it. And up, and now the top. Good, that's fine. Now the next part of the examination are the optic fundi, and for this we need to dim the lights as much as possible. So we use an ophthalmoscope, and when neurologists use an ophthalmoscope it's not in quite the same role as ophthalmologists. We want to look at the optic fundi to make sure principally that there's no papilledema or optic atrophy. So I'm going to ask you to look straight ahead, Hugh. I'm just going to steady your eye here, and I'm going to move this light into your eye. And that's perfect. And I'm now going to use the other side. I'm going to ask you to turn around a little bit there, and again to look straight ahead over there. So I'm using my left eye for his left. I just look straight a bit higher up. And that's perfect. And still with the lights dimmed, we're now going to test the reactions of the pupils. Now, the first pupillary reflex is the direct reaction to light, which should make the pupil constrict. So I'm now going to shine a light in Hugh's right eye. Could you look at the camera, Hugh? That should constrict. And I'm going to do that again. And as well as a direct reaction, there's now a consensual reaction, so I'm going to shine a light in the right eye, and we should see the left pupil constrict. And again, and I'm now going to do exactly the same thing in the other eye. Could you look straight ahead? And this is the direct reaction. And again, And now the consensual reaction, where we shine into the left and we look at the right pupil. And again. Good. That's fine. Now the next reaction, we need, we'll have the lights back on for this, is the reaction to accommodation. Hugh, could I ask you to look into the distance? And then when I put your finger up here, I want you to look at the finger. And you should see two things happen here. The pupils should constrict, and there should be convergence of the eye. So look into the distance shoe, and now look at your finger. And we'll do that again. Just look into the distance, look as far away as you can, and now look at the finger. 
Good, and that concludes the examination of the second cranial nerve.